Hello and welcome to Changemakers. In this program, we have conversations with interesting people in our society who are making a change, making a difference, making an impact. Our guest today is Jenny Blake, a blogger and author of an upcoming book called Life After College, The Complete Guide to a Perfect Life. Jenny, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Gopi. Thanks for having me. And in addition, I understand you also work at Google and career development and coaching. I do. Besides being a big fan of yoga, triathlons, <laughs> coffee, and deserts. Quite a, quite a mix there. Thanks. I, I keep myself busy. That is the one thing I can say. That is fabulous. And uh, looking at your blog, I can certainly think so. Now, yeah. I understand you have one of the top 10 Gen Y blogs in the country, if not in the world. So tell <laughs> me about your blog. It's, my blog is lifeaftercollege.org. Yeah. And I really blog about everything. It's, it doesn't really have as much to do with life after immediately after graduating as it does life in general. So I really talk about life, work, money, dating relationships every now and then, uh, templates, organization. My goal is really share my personal experiences, the ups and the downs, and give people practical tips to help them organize their lives and feel like they kind of have things under control. Now, I sort of get this feeling when I walk into a bookstore, pick up a newspaper, a magazine, yeah. or open up almost any blog, that the advice industry must be the biggest and most <laughs> lucrative industry <laughs> right. in the country. Well, there are thousands <laughs> of books in any bookstore. Right? So why did you feel that there was the need for one more in that same category? You know, and that, that was a big fear that I had mm -hmm. for a while. My story, the short version, is that I actually left school early. I took a leave of absence at the start of my junior year. I was at UCLA and one of my political science professors asked if I wanted to move to Palo Alto, I was actually my hometown, and s help start this company doing online polling. And so I said yes, I kind of jumped at the chance, I left school, picked up, my friends kind of thought I was crazy, and that experience was amazing. I mean, I learned so much working at the startup. I was the first employee. Yeah. I was 20 years old and everyone else had many, many more years of work experience. And so I felt really isolated and I felt like I was figuring it all out for the first time on my own because most of my friends were still partying and taking finals. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm kind of a resource gopher. I love reading personal development books. I probably keep that whole industry alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to me, learning something isn't as good if I can't also share it. Sure. And so I thought, you know, I've, I've gathered so many resources. I've read so many books. Who knows if anyone cares what I have to say? And yes, a big fear I had was I'm just going to be another cog in the machine, another voice. Do I have anything unique to say? And through a coaching experience, decided, you know what? Yeah, I do. And, and if people think that what I have to say is cliche, they don't have to read. But I'm just going to do my thing. I like to write. This is going to be fulfilling for me no matter what. And I just assumed, you know, the people who like what I do will stick around. Yeah. So you're in your junior year, and suddenly you drop out, go do <laughs> yeah. something crazy. Well, yeah. clearly you're an elite company if you moved out to Silicon Valley. Because <laughs> I did finish from school, Bill so Gates that helps. To Steve Ballmer <laughs> to you know, Steve Jobs, they all dropped out. So you know. Right. I, I didn't even realize it at the time, but I was yes. just following in their footsteps. Exactly. So yeah. was it scary to drop out? What did your mom say? It was. You know, my, my mom and my family was actually really supportive. And it, we could all see this was a cool opportunity. Yeah. And I was ahead in school. I had done that on purpose because I always thought that I wanted to work on a presidential campaign. So at that time, it would have been the 2004 presidential campaign. And I knew that I want to be, I want to have the freedom and flexibility to go work on this campaign and take a few quarters off school. And so, sort of just coincidentally, this political polling company was going to be started, and, and I wanted to be a part of it. And so I think we all recognized, even though it was a little non-traditional to leave school, my friends were kind of saying, what, are you crazy? Like, we have the, the next 60 years to work full time. Why are you going to leave school early and go do that? But I loved every second of it. And as long as I was somewhere that was crazy and all abuzz during the election, I was happy. And I did all kinds of stuff like marketing, websites, office management, great skills. And why didn't you stay on? Why did you go back to school then? Well, they, I was there for a year and I had one quarter left to finish at UCLA. So they let me work part time or remotely while I finished school. And I graduated with my class that spring. So that was really nice. And let me tell you, if you want to appreciate your education and sure. what it's like to just 
not have to work full time, take time off and go back for a quarter. <laughs> because <laughs> that was great because I really had that one quarter to just be with my friends yeah. and know I had a job waiting for me, thankfully, and I could just go and really live it up that last quarter. The luxury nice. of unlimited time yeah. with no schedule. And just knowing what what's on the other side, yes. it was a great way to kind of go back and have my last hurrah with my class. So getting back to your blog, and yeah. at some point you said, I'm going to use one of the tools like blog or a WordPad and start doing the yeah. blog. Now I know you're very famous. Your blog is very <laughs> popular. You've got you know hundreds of thousands of readers. But when you do that first post, it's yeah. out there. No one knows about it. Did it feel very lonely out there on the Internet when you oh. submitted it? Absolutely. I mean, at first, I'm writing for my mom, my dad, my grandparents, anyone that I had subscribed. <laughs> yeah. What a rabbit one, too. Yeah, exactly, to no one. And the funny thing is, I set up the website because I wanted to practice web development. I didn't even know what a blog was when I first set it up. So I actually have almost more people who come to me, rather than wanting career coaching, they secretly want to start a blog, yes. and they don't know where to start. And I always say, it's, it literally is one step at a time doesn't have to be the perfect design just start writing start putting stuff out there and for me uh, I just kind of I felt like I'm gonna write what I'm interested in mm -hmm. and see where it goes I never tried to build traffic but it just kind of happened naturally so do you write every single day oh my gosh no <laughs> there's no way I could I write I try and post twice a week mm -hmm. recently with the book stuff it's been more like once a week I see so what are like some of the most popular posts from the hundreds that you have uh, written? <laughs> the, some of the most popular, one of the most popular was Motivated by Achievement, mm -hmm. A Blessing or a Curse. But really the ones that get people are the Dating and Relationships posts. Of course, <laughs> which, yes. <laughs> yeah, which cracks me up because I'm always so hesitant to write on that topic. I feel like a total mess when it comes to my dating life. And I'm, when I write those posts, I'm always terrified to hit publish. Like, oh my gosh, people are just going to think I'm a nutcase. And I, it takes me almost a week of mulling, rereading. The last one I did it was an, an open letter to love. It's not you, it's me. Basically, like, let's take a break. I'm tired of looking for you. And I woke up at 3 a.m. making edits before I hit publish. But those get the biggest response. People really come out of the woodwork and say, thank you so much. I really needed this. They send it to their friends. Yeah. and. So, so why is it that you know, we've been around <laughs> for 5,000 years and everyone has been you know, loving and falling out of love? By <laughs> right. now, you would assume in the human experience we've figured this yeah. out. So why do you think those topics get the most attention? I think part of it, I think overall, no matter what specific topic, people like to see the vulnerable side. They like to know that they're not the only one struggling or having a hard time with something. And I really try and show that side. I, I'm not perfect. and don't ever claim to be so I I want to show people those those moments where I kind of am searching around for answers too and so I think particularly with the dating and relationships one people can relate yeah they just it's, that is it is a universal topic absolutely so I'm sure our viewers <laughs> are dying of curiosity so Jenny Blake <laughs> oh, no. what is the complete guide to a perfect life when it comes to <laughs> dating and relationships oh, tell gosh. me well the book the is five actually, step program <laughs> it's the complete guide to getting what you want because I don't claim to know how to have a perfect life in any by any stretch but uh, certainly when it comes to dating and relationships it's funny because I was terrified to write that chapter so my book has a chapter for every area of someone's life life, work, money, systems and organizations, fitness and nutrition. When it came to dating relationships, I was like, oh, babe, what am I going to say? I don't know what to write. But mm -hmm. that was part of it. It was drawing on that stuff. And, and in my book, at least, I'm more focused on helping people work through what it is they want. Okay. So even if I can't tell someone, certainly can't tell someone how to manage their dating life, I can at least give them some exercises like, what are your must-haves? What are your nice-to-haves? Yeah. I have an, even a template for what, when you break up with someone, here are some questions you can run through with yourself to feel better and vent, get things out of your system. So, <laughs> so are you willing to go on camera and talk about what are your must-haves? Oh, or my do? gosh. Um, that's a great question. Clint, you must see. have thought a lot Let's about it if you had to write a whole book You know what's it. funny? I've written those lists over and over, and I throw them out every time because I'm like, what do I know when it comes to dating? I... 
I know nothing, and who am I to think I can intellectually say what it is that I want or that I'm looking for? Sure. So I think my hope is more like I'll figure out what I want when I meet that person and it's right. But in general, sense of humor, respect, trust, someone that I can have fun with that gets along with my friends and family. That's where I feel like we are kind of partners in crime. Absolutely. Yeah. Great list. Yeah. <laughs> so and have there been any posts that have been like particularly controversial that you know, there are a lot of bricks thrown at it and people didn't <laughs> like it and they got angry and well, again, in the dating relationship, none, thankfully, I don't have... Wait, do you blog about anything else at all? I don't. You don't? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> in fact, your post was a huge hit. The How I outsourced my life to 15 people was amazing. But the dating, do you go for quantity or quality? That one sparked a lot of discussion, again, with the dating stuff. And people are angry about it. I promise I write it? about other things. They, they just, it was two sides of the coin. Because I, for one, I don't, I don't love the idea of going on a hundred dates until I meet someone I'd rather just not date <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> and kind of do my, do my thing, live my life. Good. So now you have a book deal. Congratulations. Yeah, thank so you. tell me about it. Thank what you what so is the much. book about? Who's publishing it? What's going on there? Thanks. Very exciting. I wrote a book ba kind of based on my blog. I describe it as Twitter meets what color is your parachute, but for every area of someone's life. Yeah. So the idea is that it's snippets of quotes, exercises, and advice for college graduates and really 20-somethings. I have people who are 60-plus years old who've read it and say that it's helped them. Yeah. And I think of it like life coaching So trapped in the 20s? Or it's just, it's more <laughs> like the, the ho my hope and when yeah. I wrote it is that the tips and exercises and there's quotes from famous people sure. and recommended books could help anyone at yeah. any stage. But certainly when people are graduating college they're lost and confused and the, the part about you know the complete guide to getting what you want I'm not the expert on their lives or your life yeah. so my goal what I mean when I say that is that I provide some tips and guidance and structures that might help but ultimately it's I think going to be the exercises in every chapter that help people figure out for themselves yeah. okay great so Jenny is now telling me to do X Y and Z what do I want and how do I want to get there? So a question I have for you, Jenny, is you know, when you do write your blog or mm -hmm. your book, especially on a topic <coughs> like this personal growth, self-development, yeah. how to make changes to some difficult aspects of your life from money to relationships, you're writing so much about yourself. And yeah. I know it is part of the whole internet generation, whether yeah. you're on Facebook or on a blog. Do you feel a little vulnerable that so much of your life is out in front of the whole planet? Yeah, absolutely. And you feel comfortable with that? I, you know, I think of it like, imagine an, uh, an actor who's going to be on stage for the first time, sort yeah. of like peeking their head outside the curtain little by little. <laughs> so I feel like rather than a gr great reveal, I've sort of learned how to share more in bits and pieces. And for me, it's all in service of my readers. I know that even if it's hard for me to share something personal or a personal detail, that ultimately I do it because I know that it's going to help people. And for all those emails that I get, that people say, thank you so much. I really needed this today. This made my day. That's why it's worth it to me. And on that note, I should say, too, I almost didn't. I wrote this book, yeah. and it sat in my computer for three or four months. I couldn't even look at the Word file. And because of that, because I was afraid of the, it was so much of me, here's now 300 pages of my ideas, and I just didn't know how it would be received. So... Um, it was a big deal when I finally decided, you know what, I, I have to just go for this mm -hmm. and try and find a literary agent and pitch to publishers. And I'm really thankful that Running Press signed on. So that's yeah. who's publishing. And I'm sure among of yours, there are many first-time authors or <laughs> aspiring authors. Yeah. And you took a concept from an idea in your head to the first blog post to making it one of the most popular blogs and now a successful book deal. So do you have any advice for people wanting to go down that same route and end up with a book? My best advice is one day at a time. It's so intimidating to think about the entire process all at once. And I actually have an inside scoop book newsletter. It's a monthly yeah. email that I send out where I want to share with people really on the inside what is going on at every stage in this process. And the reason I wanted to do that was both to share the resources I'm finding, just like I did yeah. when I was graduating college, and also to show people that 
it, it is one foot in front of the other. I almost, part of the reason I didn't want to pitch to publishers was because I was afraid, oh my God, like what if this book goes out there and I only sell two copies, one for each parent. <laughs> I'll just die of embarrassment, <clears throat> you know, because I don't know anything about sales and marketing. Sure. And that was really scary for me and I, I was so afraid of that rejection from the general public. And then I decided, you know what, Jenny, like everything you've done in your life has involved just research and trying things out. Mm -hmm. So you focus on writing your book and pitching it. And you can, you can worry about selling and marketing it when you're lucky enough to have that problem. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel now I'm finally at that stage. I'm lucky enough to be worrying about it. It's overwhelming, but I'm ready for the challenge. Absolutely. I mean, it seems like in every stage of your life, you always be willing to go out and try and, and uh, had that confidence. So have you always been like supremely confident of yourself? You know, it's in interesting. Manner? I've been asked that question before and, and it's a tough one for me to answer sometimes because I don't feel 100% confident all the you time. Just project it through your blog. I don't know. I mean, I'm happy that I do project it, but I want people to know that it's, it's, it is a struggle for me too, just like many people. Okay. And I think it's something that goes up and down. It is different on any given day. What I am confident in is the process that, okay, I can be so afraid of a goal that I won't want to tell anyone about it. And then I know that the next step is telling someone about it. Yeah. And I know from there that kind of making these impossible things happen, it just takes that saying it out loud and then doing some research, talking to people who've done it. And at that point, it starts becoming more and more real. And it creates a snowball effect in a sense. So that's... That's what I'm confident in, that I've done in so many different areas. Mm -hmm. But as for overall, like I said, up and down. So Jenny, do you feel scared <laughs> also at times? Yeah, you know, I think my biggest fear is, other than losing a loved one, would be this, that I, I want to make sure I'm also enjoying where I am now. So that motivated by achievement, that striving to always want to do big things, like run a marathon and do a triathlon, and I'm always on to something. And so my, my concern is I just want to make sure that I'm also enjoying where I am now and not falling prey to that grass is greener syndrome, like the grass is greener if I were to be a solopreneur and quit my day job, or the grass is greener if I had a boyfriend and wasn't single. It's like I want to just enjoy where I am and trust that life is going to fill in the blanks for me. So do you then have the fantasy of something to just want to quit and run away from it all and do something <laughs> dramatically different? In fact, I do. Okay, what I is do. the fantasy? I mean... Which island? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bora Bora, maybe? Uh, I, it's funny because I, I signed up for a yoga teacher training in wow. Santa Barbara, and it's coming up. And it's 16 days totally unplugged, and I, that's going to blow my mind because I'm so... Technology is such a huge part of our lives. I get so overwhelmed all the time. Yeah. Like, people, you know, look at what I'm doing, and they say, how do you do it all? How do you balance it all? And... It, just like anything, I mean, that goes up and down, too. And sometimes I get so overwhelmed by all the technology, Twitter, Facebook, email, blog comments. And I love it. I'm so thankful to have such a full community. But I think it is really important to have that time to recharge. And so onward to yoga teacher training. That's my version of running away for now. Sure. In <laughs> fact, I'm, I'm actually intrigued about that aspect because I talked about blogging and author. I know that's only two of the 12 <laughs> careers that you have. <laughs> you work at Google in career development. You're a life coach. Yeah. So uh, and how do you successfully do a full-time job at a, at, a, at a big thriving company like Google and still manage time to write a book and blog and then find time to go do yoga <laughs> teacher's training? It's a great question. It's the secret of the world. Um, I know One my, that you will my old boss <laughs> used to say, are you, you know, are you hiding five people in there? Yes. How do you do this? How do you pull time out of thin air? I mean, for me, I it's just the day job's the day job. I do some work on nights, but I try and relax at night. And then, you know, weekends, I just sort of have some time carved out for each of those things. And sometimes when the book was really in full development mode, I was spending the entire weekend on the book. But it goes, that stuff all goes in waves. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it keeps me busy, but I, I enjoy having the diverse set of activities. I actually, one of my, I feel like, you know, the, the age of the career ladder is out. You know, we're in the age of the app, like iPhone apps. 
and it's less about moving straight up and it's more about you just kind of download the component parts that are going to work for you in your life. At the point in time. Yeah, and what skills you want. And so like yoga teacher, I'm just kind of plucking it from the, from the, <laughs> the store, the app yep. store, and coaching and the book. And those are all things that are just helping me enjoy my life and just feel really fulfilled. That's interesting. I want to stay with that point because <laughs> the, the one thing that is egalitarian about this world is 24 hours is 24 hours and right. we all get the exact same right. thing. What matters is what do we do with the 24 right. hours. And you are so an inspiration in that sense. Thank, thank you. you. Tell me how. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're amazing for one. I mean, I love the way that, that you've, you've prioritized and you say what's important to you and that's being present and being with people you care about and focusing on the relationship with yourself. Yeah. And I think that is the big mistake I keep making with my time is sometimes I fall into putting all these other things first and I forget about my own health and happiness. And so I think within the 24 hours, yeah, it's figuring out what are your priorities. And I try and do that, but I'm always recalibrating. It's always shifting and depending on what's going on. So would you think that there is this curse that you and I and everyone in our generation shares with this obsession with fitting in as many things as we can and doing more as opposed to just just letting go and <coughs> relaxing and not worry about it and just have a nice easy <laughs> life, the fantasy life you have. Do you think we're just overdoing this? You know, it's a great question and one that we could ponder for a long time. <laughs> I think it probably also depends on personality type. Even as a little kid after school, I was going to aerobics and gymnastics and dance class. Like, that's just how I've always done things. So I think it really is about, and that's where it's really important. I love the phrase, comparison is a losing game, because it's not worth it to compare to what other people are doing. I could look at someone else and say, oh my God, how do they fit all that into 24 hours? Or someone who, who isn't running around like a crazy person and be so jealous of them. But it's really about figuring out, you know, I think, what are my own personal satisfaction points, levels of busyness? I might get really bored if I was just sitting on a beach for <laughs> a year, although I'll, maybe I'll try it out. Yes. <laughs> when you sit. Maybe I'll try it before when you're I rule Santa it Barbara out. for your yoga course. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. That would be great. So and clearly, I mean, all of the kind of busy lives you lead must have periods of stress. And clearly, and from some of your blog posts I know and the comments that people make, there is a lot of stress out there as people mm -hmm. are trying to do all of these things and feel overwhelmed and feel the pressure to perform at a certain level. Yeah. Uh, how does Jenny Blake de-stress <laughs> and unplug? Yoga is my savior. So yoga, that's a mandatory once or twice a week if I can. That's a big thing, spending time with friends. And I, I'm someone who, in general, I'm extroverted, but I, it's important to me to take time at the end of the day to just be by myself and recharge. I live alone right now, which I'm thankful for. That's good quiet time. Yeah. And for me, it's just the, the, the fundamentals, like just getting outside, getting exercise, making sure I'm eating in a way that makes me feel good. And that's, that's how I try, but I'm still figuring that out. And do you have some general, easy to follow advice on that front? That for de-stressing? De for your readers or for yeah, the viewers? Yeah, definitely. The thing that helps me the most, when I'm stressed out, I find it's because I feel like I've way too much to do. And so pick three things. Like, what are the three things that you can get done today or that you need to get done today that are going to feel good? And just start there. Don't even worry about everything else. And maybe if you're super stressed out, it's what is the one thing. In general, like even at Google, we work in such a fast-paced environment. Sure. We're not curing cancer. It's not brain surgery. If one of my to-dos has to wait until the next day or even the next week, nobody's going to die. And so I try and remind myself of those things and know that we're always going to have a to-do list. We are always going to have emails in our inbox. So I think it's really about kind of accepting the fact that we may not clear everything to zero every day. That's fine. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's tackling what are the biggest, my, one of my favorite books, Eat That Frog. You know, he says if you tackle your biggest thing, your yes. big frog first thing in the morning, yeah. you'll feel great. So just start there. Start small. So it sounds like if I were to summarize it, it seems like, you know, lead a full life, do a lot of things, pluck things from yeah. as you need it. But any one point in time, just focus on a few so it seems manageable. Absolutely. And then all the things that you don't get done, just let go. Yes. And then when it gets too much, do some yoga. Yeah. 
See, it's so, you make it sound so easy. It's simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The magic formula for I think for you could write a book on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the book, when is the book coming out again? The book comes out in March, at the end of March of next year. And the name is? The name is Life After College, The Complete Guide to Getting What You Want. And what happens, what is life <clears throat> after the book going to be like? And as you publish it, and then where do you go with it? Well, I'm hoping to do a book tour. Book tours are kind of, in a way, a thing of the past because, because of the internet and national media. But to me, it's like why you have a wedding for your marriage. It's just fun. So I, I'm hoping to organize a book tour so that I can travel around the country and hopefully speak at college campuses and meet a lot of my Twitter friends who I've known for several years now. And then after that, we will see. I don't know. World domination. Absolutely. <laughs> a great aspiration. And who's going to get the first copy? Oh, my gosh. That's a great question. I don't know. We'll see. It's a, I'll have to sell it for a million dollars. Well, maybe the other <laughs> way of asking the question is, who's inspired you the most on all of these things? Clearly, you've led uh, a fantastic life that is full, that is rich, that is complex in its detail, and oh, you. Uh, um, you can look back on and feel very proud of yourself. And yeah. who's been your biggest inspiration to get you to this point? I would say, by far, my parents and my family and my grandparents and my brother. I mean, the people who I've just grown up observing my whole life have all contributed in such valuable ways. And once I found coaching, I was so fortunate to work with these incredibly inspiring, amazing coaches who really helped me. And, and then seeing authors and other Googlers, people like you who are also doing such amazing Thank things, you. really, to me, it's about the sum total. And I'd say also, I mean, I don't think I've given enough credit to the readers too. Yeah. So our guest today has been <laughs> Jenny Blake, blogger and author of an upcoming book, Life After College, The Complete Guide to a Perfect Life. Jenny, it's been a pleasure <laughs> having you on the show. Thank I look forward so to much. having you back, especially after the book is published. Thank, Thank you, you so again much, for Kofi. being with us. Thanks for having me.